And uh, what are we going to do? Okay, I'm going to read you a story! Woo! <laughs> what happens? I haven't written it. I don't try it much, you know, but, uh, but once in a while somebody asked me to do something and I decided recently I was going to try to uh, write a few stories and then what's up, I haven't written anything recently so I'm going to read you that story. Um, there's a woman, T.G. Bryan, who had this visual exhibit and then there was a closing party for it and she asked if I could participate and I wrote this story about my sexual uh, interactions with ghosts. I'll read it to you right now and I'll read it really fast because time is uh, running. So, uh, Go. I was visiting my great aunt Rita, my tante Rita, the older sister of my maternal grandmother one day when I was five years old. I was very excited about visiting her that day because she had just bought an automatic french fries making machine, one that both cut the potatoes in a zigzag shape and fried them after. She had a reputation amongst both adults and kids on the street for serving the best french fries with ketchups. Heinz only, because we were told with Heinz, because with Heinz we were told the business was ketchup. Ma tante Rita was an older sick woman with bad arthritis, severe asthma, and chronic eczema around her elbows and knees. She chain smoked Mark 10 cigarettes one after the other, package after package. She could smoke up to three, even four packages a day, especially when her French fries with Heinz ketchup orgies no, turned no, out. No, 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 right there. <laughs> Especially when our French fries with Heinz ketchup or just turned out to be particularly successful. You can imagine the poetic soundscape that offered itself as a backdrop for these exquisite feasts. <gasps> delicious french fries with Heinz ketchup when I got intrigued by a large picture hanging on her kitchen wall. I couldn't really figure out what was going on in the picture. People didn't exactly look like people and the activities they were involved in didn't yet make sense for me. I stopped eating, grabbed my glass of ice cold refreshing kick cola, swallowed a, swallowed a mouthful of it and naively asked her, Madame Trita, who is the man in the picture? She gave me a long, penetrating, threatening, almost vicious look and said, it's the devil. His name is Satan and one day he's gonna come and shove his two foot long red hot burning pitchfork up your ass while you're sleeping. <laughs> now people sometimes ask me why I'm so wacky. Well that's because I grew up surrounded by wacky people and very impressive images. The thought, for example, of a man I had until then never heard of, someone called Satan popping out of nowhere to impale me in the ass like a marshmallow in the middle of the night while I'm sleeping was very stunning for a five year old kid. <laughs> my french fries and the hell with the ketchup lines at this point, I tried to assess the damage associated with the silent but stinky and wet fart that her declaration had caused in my Popeye the Sailor Man boop boop underwear. It was their lucky day and despite everything they were going to survive with a few skid marks on me. I looked at the picture again. I was now able to see what was going on. There was a man, a very unusual man, white, tall, skinny, but muscular, with a long nose, an extended, narrow tongue, large ram horns, crooked teeth, hooves, an extremely hairy ass and back, and a short but very thick, erect, uncircumcised penis. He was heating over a fire, a pitchfork, the kind farmers used to pick up hay bundles and cow dung. Behind him were gathered a dozen men and women with their tongues hanging in all directions out, trying to lick his ass. The picture was so powerful, it terrified me, confused me, grossed me out, and turned me on all at the same time. Madame Rita's evil prophecy had an immediate and permanent impact on me and my sleeping pattern. From that very night, I started sleeping on my back, tucking my entire body, head, shoulder, arms, hips, and butt cheeks, legs, and especially feet and toes under the blanket. I strategized that if I was well tucked under my blankets and the devil came to fork my, to fork my ass up while I slept, that he would first have to untuck me in order to fool me up. I figured that this would wake me up and give me enough time to scream my lungs out and wake up our three miniature chihuahuas and sleep in the attic. In my childish mind, I concluded that Coco, Coquette, and Pompon's loud, piercing, fast-paced yapping, their sharp, half-rotting teeth tucked by their abominable breath, would scare any devil away. I also 
from that very night refused to go to bed if there wasn't a full 100 watts light bulb shining over my bed. <laughs> no kitty kitty little Mickey Mouse or Santa Claus nightlight was going to be strong enough to repel Satan if I woke up in the middle of the night with him under my sheets. <laughs> This fear of being impaled by the devil's red-hot burning pitchfork during my sleep also meant that I was never again going to be able to have a deep sleep. I was always going to keep some ties to that I was well, you know, I was always going to keep some ties to reality while sleeping. My sleep from then on consisted in attempting to navigate between various degrees of these two-dimensional poles. One we call being awake or consciousness, the other one we call being asleep or unconsciousness. It brought me to experience almost on a daily basis what people call astral projections or out-of-body experience. <laughs> While I've had a few trips that would make any 70s keepy quite jealous, over the last 25 years most of my out-of-body time has been spent running away from demons, entities and other evil forces. Sometimes there are full-scale monsters who try to maim and sexually assault me. Sometimes they are just forces that try to take over my mind and body to possess me. Sometimes it can be just an arm floating in front of me and trying to choke me. All the times it's just a pair of eyes looking at me and trying to intimidate me. But about uh, last year, a shift occurred. One morning I was resting on my back in my bed when I froze and got projected in space. I quickly felt this foul energy around me in the whole bedroom. I was trying to concentrate and gather my strength to reintegrate my body when I heard this evil voice telling me something I didn't clearly understand but which somehow threatened my cats. It was the first time that any of these entities or forces had ever made references to or threatened any of my loved ones. I screamed, fuck off in direction of the voice. I was back in my body in half a second, the bedroom was all of a sudden peaceful with a gentle caressing breeze passing through. This was the beginning of a new era in my relationships with spirits, with spirits, ghosts and the devil himself. I had turned the tables around. They were no longer going to be on top of things in charge deciding on where and how to interact with and harass me. Whenever I see them now, they appear to be completely inoffensive, sometimes goofy, ridiculous, ridiculous in their attempts to scare me, and most of the time lonely, sad, sexually repressed, and frustrated. <laughs> I am a prostitute, giving people affection, a few good licks at the right place, and a piece of my ass is for me a humanitarian vocation. <laughs> So I did what comes naturally and started to have sex with them. I had to be a little bit persuasive, I would even say aggressive at first, but once they really took notice of my irresistible features, they didn't need a workshop to figure out where and how to eat and suck and lick. They liked the look, the taste, the smell, they liked it all. I love big, burly, round men with healthy bellies and big asses, and one of my regular ghost lovers, Bartolome, fits exactly that type. He is a very large, round, orange, giant, half-pumpkin, half-human spirit, <laughs> and he knows exactly how to get me off. I didn't have to explain to him that my penis doesn't function like a guy's penis. He looked at me right in the eyes and said, baby, no need to talk, I know where your juicy pussy is. And he proceeded to slurp his big, pumpkin, human spirit on left and right under my balls, up and down and in and out of my ass. Another one of my favorite ghost lovers is one I call Sylvester because he has a lisp. He claims to be the spirit of a 48-year-old New York City bachelor and celibate post office worker who died in a circuit in the late 80s. He says he was having a bath, but overly excited listening to Olivia Newton-John's hit physical, started to be jumping jacks horizontally in his bathtub and banged his music box which fell in the water. He was still a virgin when he died. He has a big thing for boobies, I've been dreaming about them for decades and I am very grateful to him because all he does is suck on my nipples and massage my breasts which helps prevent encapsulation around my implants. 